loving Heavenly Father, we give thanks we can meet via Zoom again uh, to look into the chronology of the Bible. We ask the Holy Spirit to guide us your study, to direct us, and um, pray if it be profitable, give us a greater, greater understanding of your word. Um, we pray for those in the world today, Father, you're looking at scenes of war, Father, we pray that uh, you can comfort those who are being persecuted and the, that those who are seeing these here things can awaken to the times we are living in and know that you are the answer to all our needs. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Stephen, where did where did we get to last time? Do you remember? Can you give us a review of how far we had gotten? Because I thought we had gone through the kings, and but then we're kind of going back today, right, to deal with some details. We did almost get through the kings. Uh, we stopped. Um, let's see, Josiah, I think. Yes, so yeah, we done six oh five because I Jehoiakim, some, yeah, yes, because there were some things you noted there, and I made corrections on it. Okay, and we done four five ninety seven as well. There was things there we um, okay. I think that's wrong there. So, so we're going to go. So, so what we're going to do today then is we're going to kind of deal with um, a few of the periods, just kind of work out some of the details. Well, what I'm going to do now is is just go uh, a quick brief look over some. Of the, okay. I've made some changes. Okay. From the last document, from the last presentation, uh, we highlighted some things, and I've added some things to this year document. And uh, hopefully not spend too long. And then we'll we'll look at the issue with uh, Josiah. Okay. Or maybe not Josiah. Hosea. 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 Yeah. Right. Okay. But we'll go back to there. And I was just working on a document just before I uh, began here, so I haven't added to any of my these here documents, but it's still just on a. Uh, PowerPoint. Okay. But we'll look at that. Okay. Yeah. So just a brief view of what we did last time, the kings. Uh, we've seen that if you add up the king's reigns, it comes to 393 and six months. Yeah. Years. And then uh, you can take account of a two-year uh, co-regency. Mm -hmm. Um. I dealt with that. Now, I've added some more of these here. Diagrams where you compare the kings of Israel and the kings of Judah. Yeah. Now, we, look, we had this one done the last time. And uh, so we've seen that. Um, I don't think I made any changes to this one, but I, made, yeah. I have done two more. Yeah. Well, just go back to that one a little bit. So... So the nice thing about these diagrams is they're they're focusing in on an, on a short period of time, and it's really useful to see Asa's reign here with these other periods instead of being stretched out. You know, because often when we draw out these chronology lines, you know, we we'll we'll make them in sort of a, you know, Bish has twenty six years, so it's it's going to be big. But you can just see here by placing it this way, you can see a lot more at once. And, and you can see it's 24 years for Besha and two for Nadab. So you don't have to make Besha, you know, 12 times as long as Nadab. <laughs> That's how I tended to do it anyway. So this, this is, these are nice. And then just adding things up and looking at how they line up with uh, a short period of time of the period of the Kings, uh, I think is really useful. Yes, so for instance, it'll say that Nadab reigned two years. 
Yeah. And that he he gone the rain on the second year of ESA, mm -hmm. and then he died in the third year of ESA. Yeah. So we know it's not going to be two years, full years. It's going to be right. less than two years, and it's going to be rounded up. Or else you could maybe say it's including the ascension year of Nadab. Well, okay. So one of the things I know it's it's not an easy thing for people to visualize, but basically they're going to count uh, any part of t of a year as as a year based upon the biblical year, either whether they're going spring to spring or fall to fall. So um, yeah, so we, you know we would just say two years. You know, it's got to be two years. But what they're what they're wanting to do is is um, I mean, because they're telling you he starts in the second year of Asa and ends in the third year. Well, you know that's a year, right? I mean, if we were going to count it, we'd say that's a year. But it's parts of two years, and I've come to the conclusion that um, even though the northern kingdom counts their reigns um, fall to fall, that when the Bible's counting the years of their reign, they're counting them um, based upon the biblical year spring to spring. I shouldn't say I've come to the conclusion. I, I, I'm leaning towards that conclusion from some of the study I've done recently. And, and it's, it seems like a good explanation so that when they say he reigned two years, what they mean is he reigned part of the second year of Asa and part of the third year of Asa. It has nothing to do with his particular count. And, and if you think about it, what, what they're doing is the kings of Judah are meant to be added up so that you can come to a total of the kings of Judah. But the kings of Israel are just basically attached to the the kings of judah right so the kings of israel they're not trying to tell you how many years on their count that they've that they have for those kings they're just trying to tell you so when it says two years it's actually talking about the two years of asa's reign does that make sense and uh, we have abijah here yeah um, with Jeroboam, it's, uh, he begins his reign in the 18th year of Jeroboam, and he, he ends it in the 20th year of Jeroboam. So mm -hmm. that would be the same thing, except it's the other way. It's not, it's not with the... Uh, it's it's yeah. vice versa. Yeah, but see, he may have reigned like two and a half years or two and three quarter years, right? So they're going to have to round it up if you're going to add the total, right? At least my view is it seems that they want us to be able to know how many years it's been, right? They're not, they're not just, you know, they're not being arbitrary about it. They have a, a reason why they're doing what they're doing. So, yeah, so you could easily begin – since they and that's one of the reasons we know they have staggered reigns, right? Yeah. So the the Book of Kings, we don't know who the writer is, and we don't know exactly when it was written. Is that right? Yeah. It's just yeah, we compiled. Know. It's compiled maybe in the time of the captivity. Would that be right? Well, I, I was thinking that the the Book of Kings was compiled. Um, over the period of time in which it occurred, and that this, is, but the Book of Chronicles, which was put together by Ezra, is taking lots of these other sources and putting them together, including the books of Kings and, and other books. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, we don't know exactly who put together the Book of Kings. We do know Chronicles was Ezra. Okay. Okay. We've covered this here. 
So this is another thing I've just picked up. So I'm amplified. I had mentioned it there just as a footnote. Okay. So this is the Jehu. His uh, his reign is replaced by his son. Um, Jehoahaz, and then yeah. he is replaced by jo jo Jehoash or Jehoash. Okay, the thing with Jehoash, yeah. Okay. So uh, it says there in 2 Kings 13, verse 1, and in the three and twentieth year of Jehoash, Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, began to reign over Israel in Samaria, and he reigned 17 years. Mm -hmm. And then uh, his son uh, Jehoash and the th this Jehoash, sorry, is sort of <laughs> they're kind of sort of yeah, they're similar uh, Jehoash and Joash, yeah. Yeah, and sometimes they are spelled the same. So in the I know in the thirty seventh year of Joash, so this is the twenty third year. So this would be like fourteen years later. Mm -hmm. So the thirty seventh year began Joash, the son of Jehoahaz, to reign over Israel in Samaria, and he reigned 16 years. So these here, 17 years would seem to extend three years uh, after uh, Joash, Jehoahaz, Jeho Jehoash begins to reign. So that's maybe like an evidence of uh, a cool regency in in yeah. uh, northern northern Israel. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I have added that to the uh, this next diagram. So we we left off with Ahab and Jehoshaphat. So I've added them to this one just to yeah. sort of pick, pick up the line again. And. Uh, this is identifying Jehu and then Jehoahaz is going 17 years. And then this year is like a, a three-year three, three year period in here then, mm -hmm. which would uh, be like a co-regency. Cool yeah. And there's a, an issue here with the, the second year of Jehoram being the 18th year of Jehoshaphat. That uh, oh, it says that uh, Ahaz Ahazia, yeah, the son of Ahab, he uh, he dies at that their time. So this would be before, but Jehoram he actually only he really begins to reign in the fifth year of Jehoram. Yeah, but it says here that. Uh, this book, Joram, he begins to reign in the second year of uh, Jehoram. Mm -hmm. So the, un the understanding there is that uh, the story in uh, 1 Kings 22, you have mm -hmm. Jehoshaphat and Ahab sort of come together to um, come against Ramoth Gilead. So the idea there is that Jehoshaphat made Joram some kind of a, sort of like a co-regent maybe in some sense, like a, some viceroy ready to step in uh, just in case something happened to Jehoshaphat, maybe. That, that's what somebody, that's what uh, someone has suggested. Yeah. So it would tie in with the timeline. Um, so if you go back two years, that will be roughly where Ahab died at that battle. Yeah. Okay, and it's uh, it mentions there that would be the seventeenth year of Jehoshaphat. Okay. And then you have Jehoram here in the eighteenth year of Jehoshaphat, and the second year of Jehoram. That okay. uh, Jehoram is, is quite <laughs> again. It's uh, I know, and, and it's such a difficult puzzle because of the similarities of names to keep track of who they're talking about. But uh, um, so I have I 
hang it wrote about it here mm -hmm. that's uh, that's the one you showed us yeah so Jehoram the son of Jehoshaphat began to reign in the fifth year of Jehoram and then uh, of Joram so that's uh, mentioned that there and then it's first kings for 117 would appear to make uh, that joram began to reign jehoram's second year and um, larry price suggests he's he i think he's someone that does work with um answers in genesis larry pierce? larry pierce is it pierce what have i got Because I know a Larry Pierce who works with answers in Genesis. Okay, so I have to check that. Uh, I have price there. Okay. But uh, I'll check that. Yeah. Um. So he suggests Joram made a, was made a vice regent sometime in the 16th year of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat at that time was preparing to help Ahab with the Assyrians and appointed his son as caretaker while he would be away. Yeah, it's Larry, it's Larry Pierce you're quoting. Right, okay, thanks. So Jehoram numbered his years of reign from that point until he was made viceroy six years later. So that's what he's suggesting. Now, which paper was that of his? It was Usher's timeline of the divided kings. Yep, that's Larry Pierce. Yeah, yeah, that's his sort of specialty dealing with Usher. Mm -hmm. And then just like another seeming little issue there is that the twelfth year of Ahaziah. Sorry, the twelfth year of Joram, Ahaziah begins to reign. Yeah. It also mentions that it's his 12th year as well. His 11th year and his 12th year, two different yes. ways. I have the scriptures here. In the 12th year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, did Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, begin to reign. And then it says, and in the 11th year of Joram, the son of Ahab began Ahaziah to reign over Judah. So my understanding is that... Uh, it depends how you, if you're going to include his accession year or not. Mm. That would be a valid reason. So his accession year began in the 11th year of Joram. Mm -hmm. But he began the reign with yeah. having his years counted in his 12th year. Yeah, and, and so it seems evident that, that different uh, chronologists look at it from different perspectives. That is, they sometimes are counting a king's reign differently than he would count it even. Whether you're in northern Israel or southern Israel. Whether you're going to count it spring to spring or fall to fall. Okay, so I've added some details here that I had not recognized. You brought to light that the Jeroboam died. Uh, earlier than I had it. You know, I didn't recognize this here period when the users like 11 years or so, where yeah. there's like anarchy. Yeah, uh, there's, yeah, the years of anarchy, they sometimes refer to it as an interregnum. So, uh, yeah, so Northern Israel, in order for them to have a king over all of Israel, they have to be able to unite all of Israel. So. There's mm -hmm. a period of time in which this doesn't happen. Okay, so um, there's an issue here now we can address the 27th year of Jehor Jeroboam. So uh, it mentions there that Amaziah was killed in a conspiracy and Isaiah reigns. Yeah. 
and um, the thing is with Amaziah's age, I, I think the chronology is I have it out right here. So Jeroboam begins the reign in the uh, the fifteenth year of Amaziah. Mm -hmm. So the twenty seventh year of of Jeroboam, he'll be reigning like that. Would be um, let me see now. How does this work? That's fourteen years between eight twenty four mm -hmm. eight ten. Yes. So the the uh, Isaiah then began to reign at that their time when he's aged, according to I think this is Asher's proposal that he was sixteen, mm -hmm. and you have here uh, the twenty seventh year, going back to eight twenty six, sorry eight thirty six, when mm -hmm. uh, Jeroboam would be a viceroy. For a certain length of time before he actually begins to reign solely in mm -hmm. the 15th year of Amaziah. So maybe you can explain this better. So <laughs> well, it's just in, in this count, it just it just says that when he he technically begins to reign is at age four, but he's under regents. And and this isn't really my solution. This is this is other people have, have had this solution as well. Uh, so right. it's been around for a long time, but um, it's the one I, I, I choose. I, I don't choose Asher's proposal. It seems, um, from my perspective at least, a little bit contrived. Uh, just doesn't seem as clear where whether I'm right or not, I can't tell you. But uh, the idea that he's under regents from the age of four until 16 um, is just another solution, I guess, to the problem. But Amaziah is going to die in 810 um, in either case. Yes. It's just determining what age Uzziah is at that time. Yeah, it's basically just the age of Uzziah that's the issue, not how long Uzziah reigns. Correct. Yes. Yeah. So, so whether one's right or not, it, it doesn't change the overall chronology. Yes, it's it's just fitting Isaiah into that twenty seventh year of Jeroboam. It's just whether you're going to have Jeroboam like being a co regent as well. For a certain amount of time until he's Isaiah is 16 at that time. Yeah, so somebody's going to have to be a co regent, whether it's Uzziah or whether it's um, the other guy, uh, uh, Jeroboam. Right? Yes. Okay, so so there's two different solutions, but nobody knows which one is the correct one. Right, okay. Um, then I haven't looked at what Ellen White says about it, to be honest. So whether she she gives any light on the matter. Yeah, I don't think she does. Yeah, I don't well, think. She does. But yeah, but maybe worth checking in. Yeah. Into that. Well, cursory reading of it, you know, but whether she there's some little clue that I missed. Mm -hmm. I'd have to read everything she writes on this. Okay, so this is the last one. So this brings about, joins again with Joash mm -hmm. uh, from that time, from when he begins to reign. And uh, I'm just wondering, I might need to change this. I'm not sure, but anyway, um, we have here then Jeroboam, and then there's that period of anarchy, about 11 mm -hmm. years. Yeah. And then we have the second year of Pekka, Jotham begins to reign until the 17th year of Pekka. Then we have Ahaz, and then there's another period of anarchy and after Pekka. And then we have 
Hosea began the reign in the 12th year of Ahaz. And then Hezekiah begins to reign in the third year of uh, Hosea. Yeah. I have added up here 121 years for from this period of time um, in Joash's when he begins to reign mm-hmm. till the sixth year of Hezekiah. And uh, if you add up the kings of Northern Kingdom, you have uh, 98 years and seven months. So basically 22 years short. Yes. So, uh, yeah. So 22 years has to be filled up with the periods of anarchy. Yes. But that there, I'm thinking that might be a bit long as well. That 121 years, it might be a short yeah. five year or two. So, I think it. I think it should be 120, but. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Because I have 20 years, nine and 11 for the years of anarchy. The first one, 11 years, and the second one, nine years. Mm-hmm. That's 20 years difference. Yeah. So that be the case. Yeah. Now just go back up there a little bit. Um, so. You know, to sort of explain to people what's happening here, because, you know, Stephen and I are very familiar with all of this. But the, but this comes down to a bit of um, an, an important point, because we're going to be dealing with uh, the, the events both in Hezekiah's reign with the Passover in Second Chronicles 29 and 30, uh, where they have it in the second month. And then also the end of Hoshea's reign with the beginning of the 2520 for Northern Israel. And it's one of the most difficult puzzles to work out. And so we're going to have to go to it in a bit more detail. But you can't just start the puzzle there. You kind of have to go back and look at this whole span, uh, or at least a lot of this span, dealing with the end of Uzziah's reign and Jotham, the uh, beginning of his reign. So one of the things it says here, just looking at that, it says, uh, the Jotham begins to reign in the second year of Pekah. But, but Pekah begins to reign in the 52nd year of Uzziah, and we assume that Jotham does as well. So they both begin to reign in the 52nd year of Uzziah or Azariah, um, and yet it appears on the surface that they're two years apart at the start of their reign, but they're really only about a half a year apart. Have, have you dealt with that? Have you tried to sort through that, Stephen? Not in, in detail. Okay. Cause, I have, yeah. I have align them. I just sort of put them together in the same year. In in here, but um, yeah, you have to go back a bit or wherever you are. So yeah, so in so the fifty second year, yeah. So that's all I've done. I changed that from last time because I had Jotham reign in seven fifty seven. We're yeah. putting on the same year. Yeah, so it's it's in the same year on our calendar, so it's about six months apart. But then it says that he begins to reign in the second year of, so he's obviously counting his reign differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I could maybe make a diagram that would explain that a bit better. Yeah. So I have a diagram. I haven't added it to this year. We can maybe look at um, this period here of uh, when Hosea begins to reign and try to work out the issues there. Okay. Can we do that? Okay. 
So okay. Um, yeah. So I just I just want to look at the so there's the verses. Pekahia reigns in Israel. So this is Pekahia um, in the fiftieth year of Azariah, and he's going to reign two years. And then in um, and then Pekka in the two and fiftieth year of Azariah, king of Judah, Azariah is Uzziah. Pekka the son of Remaliah began to reign over Israel and Samaria and reigned twenty years. So, so the thing that's interesting here is you got um, Pekahiah beginning to reign in the fiftieth, and he reigns two years, and then you have Pekka beginning to reign in the fifty and second year. Um, so that that would just be a simple addition. So it appears there that they would be using a session year dating, right? So he's not counting. He's not saying it's three years, even though it's two years apart. Um, so at least that's a possibility. But then you're going to have uh, Uzziah reigns for 52 years. And then uh, Jotham is going to begin to reign when his dad dies supposedly in the 52nd year of his reign. So so Pekka and Jotham's reign, they both begin to reign in the same year. And and that affects a lot of this count here, uh, dealing with uh, Ahaz and, uh, and Hoshea and Hezekiah. So if you don't get Pekka and Jotham right, it makes it really difficult. Now you said, um, do, do you have a diagram? Because, you know, yes. I did my diagram, so you have one similar to mine? Yes, I have to uh, change. I have to add in the 52nd year there in that diagram. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'll show you what I've just been working on. Yeah. Yeah, and this is, of course, essential for our movement, understanding 723 BC. So it's, uh, I know it's a little technical. That's uh, too big. So Hoshi is first four years. Better. Yes. <clears throat> so I I had uh, sent you a document where I was hmm. try to say that Hezekiah was like a co-regency yeah. with Ahaz. So this one here, I've kind of changed it, where it doesn't work out that that was required. And um, so here, I have here your, the year 726 BC. And this is the year of the Passover from uh, January to December. So that's the way that works. So this is just yeah. the normal years, January, December. And so we have here a March, April time period for the uh, the spring to spring count. And then a September, September, October being marked for the uh, fall to fall count. And the half A has his 12th year being from uh, the spring um, to the spring here. Mm -hmm. And we have here in the 12th year of Ahaz began Hosea to reign in Samaria over Israel nine years. Mm -hmm. So I'm having um, a place to Hosea here. There's no specific reason why that we're given from when um, Hosea begins to reign in the 12th year of Ahaz. But I'm putting him here uh, right at the uh, near the end. Okay, certainly after, I, I, certainly you could maybe have it um, a bit later if you want it. It wouldn't change anything, but I'm just sort of still putting it uh, sort of near, before A has his 13th year, so just before it. And then I'm marking there the first year of Hosea, and he's going to have a fall to fall reign. Okay, so, so let's back up a little bit. So 
can I, I'm going to share my my diagram here just because it has an earlier part that I think is important. So um, mine's, mine's a little harder to read because it's not so big. Um, you probably have a hard time seeing the years here. Uh, they're in the in the black in the center. Those are our calendar years. Um, but we know at some point that nor that Judah is going to move from a spring to spring to a fall to fall year. We we don't know when. But it seems that this this is going to happen in this period of time. Now you're you're saying it's going to happen in the reign of Hezekiah then when Hezekiah reigns. I'm going to say that, yes. Yeah, where I've I put it earlier. But this is the situation when uh, Hoshea is going to kill Pekka, and he's going to kill Pekka in the 20th year of the reign of Jotham. Now, Jotham reigns 16 years, and then he dies, and then Ahaz begins to reign sometime in 742. And... Um, you know, the question is, why does the Bible say in the 20th year of Jotham that Hoshea kills Pekka? Why wouldn't they just say the 20th or, or the fourth year of Ahaz? Right? You know, why are they referring to the father's year of reign? And, and my suggestion, whether it's right or wrong, is that since Ahaz changed how he's counting his reign, they're distinguishing it by counting the years of the reign of Jotham. So, so in this case, it would have been the third year of Ahaz if Ahaz had changed to a fall-to-fall -fall calendar. That is, before that, if he would have counted his reign in the spring of 742, then that would have been the case. It would have been in the fourth year. But he's now going to have... Uh, most of 742 being his accession year. And and then he's going to start his first year in the fall of 742. And this would be one explanation of why they're doing this, why they're saying in the 20th year of Jotham. Um, but then also we would still have the case that there are two different ways to count Ahaz's reign. So what I did is I continued his reign here on the bottom here. I'm just going to zoom in a bit. Um, so this is the period in which we're talking about. So you can see here if uh, Hoshea is going to kill uh, Pekka here in the 20th year of, of Pekka's reign, it's not going to say in the 20th year of Pekka's reign. It's going to say in the 20th year of Jotham's reign. So this is Jotham's reign. Ahaz is going to begin reigning. I don't know why this is over here. It should be a bit more over here that over there um so you can see the 20th year of of um jotham spans both the third and the fourth year of ahaz if ahaz changes it to be fall to fall here and and if this is in the 20th year this is now in the third year of ahaz and so they're just trying to be clear but but that's just one, it's just an opinion. There's no way that I can prove that, but it, it seems to explain that. And then you're going to have a nine-year period where there is no uh, king of northern Israel. And then it says that, as what Stephen is pointing out here, is that Hoshea begins to reign in the 12th year of Ahaz. And, and you can see here that if... Um, Ahaz is going fall to fall just like Hoshea, then it would just mean merely that Hoshea is going to begin to reign, and then as soon as the fall happens, he's going to count that as the beginning of his first year. So he's going to have an accession year. But if you had this reign going here, if you had Ahaz going, uh, continuing his reign from Jotham's reign, and this is where I'm not sure about when you go back and how you start up uh, – the beginning of this period, Stephen, exactly. Do you have them staggered like this a year apart, or do you have this two years? Like you, you say you have it in the same year, right? Um, yeah, just in the same year. 
Yeah. And, uh, so, so, yeah, because because it's important that you get this part right um, in order to see here that definitely if if A has is running uh, spring to spring still and Hoshia is fall to fall, uh, you run into a problem here. So so as you as you people watching, you, you'll see that it's it's not such a simple problem. That there is there's a number of different solutions, but as soon as you try to move something, it affects everything else. So it's some like some kind of uh, uh, you know game or puzzle that's meant to drive you crazy. And I mean no disrespect, but it it is a difficult puzzle. So definitely, if you're going to have Hoshia beginning to rain, I mean he could have had a long accession year, right? He could have started way back here. Um, you know, in the in the winter, beginning to rain as his accession year, and, the, and this would then be the twelfth year of 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 Ahaz. But this seems to me more likely. But there's there's not like there's a right or wrong answer that we can prove. We can just give the different solutions. So so you can go back to your drawing. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Um, to what you're doing so you can just share yours see that would um do away with your theory i would it not know that that when it says in the 12th year of ahaz began hosea rather than saying um in the, and it came to pass in the third year of Hosea that was the whatever, you know, that, that uh, well, it doesn't say it here, but the fourth year of Hezekiah. Well, is the seventh was, year, is the seventh year. So it says that the fourth year of, of Hezekiah is the seventh year of Hoshea, and the sixth year of Hezekiah is the ninth year. So that yes. means that they're both going fall to fall. And so that's what I'm showing is that I'm just showing that the fall to fall change happens with Ahaz rain, um, where you're going to put that it starts with Hoshea's rain. So it, it's going to be one of the two, right? It either starts with Hoshea's rain, or, or pardon me, Hezekiah's rain begins to go fall to fall, or with Ahaz. The reason why I chose Ahaz is just because of the Jotham, the 20th year of Jotham. But it, it still will make them both be fall to fall. Once once you get to Heze, once you get to Hoshea's reign lining up with Hezekiah's. Yes, but then you said when it says something like in the twelfth year of Ahaz began Hosea, you know, it doesn't say. Um, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. No, I don't think I said that. I, I I don't think that's any different. It's it's in the twelfth year of Hoshea, in the twelfth year of Ahaz that Hoshea begins to reign. But that's the normal language. So you begin to reign in a king of Judah, and in this case, it would just be um, that he that Hoshea has an accession year, that he has a period of time in which he's um, yeah. Because you're going to have here. You're not going to have an accession year for Hoshea. No, because he has no other king that he's sort of uh, descending from, that he's taken over. Right. He has, okay. he anarchy, so he's just coming in. Yeah. <clears throat> so that, but that's why I say that what he's doing is he's becoming king pretty late in the year that he organizes it. And, and even though he doesn't have a king before him that he's taking over, since the fall is coming, he's just going to count that as his first year. But I don't think he would have done that if he had begun way in the winter. I don't think he would have had an accession year. But but you're going to be moving Ahaz one year. You're going to be moving him quite a bit further. The beginning of this is going to be messed up. You're going to have to have... Um, him beginning his reign in 742, uh, like late in 742, Ahaz, uh, like not not in not before the spring, not 
not at like December of 742. You're going to have to have Ahaz begin his reign much later to move him this far into Hoshea's uh, reign. Um, I have to check that out. I'm not too sure whether yeah. that's necessary. But anyway. Okay. Well, let's look okay. at this, this solution. Right, okay. So Hosea begins the reign in the 12th year of Ahaz. And then it's, uh, we're not, this is like a first year, it's just like a short one. Okay. Because he, he starts his main, um, so that would be, you would be having an accession year, that's just his first year. And then he's into his second year. And then uh, come to his third year. And it's into Ahaz's 15th year, mm -hmm. which is Hosea's third year, it says there, and it came to pass, in the third year of Hosea, that Hezekiah began the reign. So Ahaz is going to die, and uh, Hezekiah is going to reign. So this is the 15th year of Ahaz, and it's 16 years he began the reign. So this is, it's maybe been rounded up, or you could say that there's an accession year as well that's um, to be added to these here 15 years. Mm -hmm. So we have here a short accession year then. So he's uh, maybe not too long into, maybe around the summertime, Ahaz dies. And then we begin, Hezekiah takes over. And then he's going to count his years then from uh, fall to fall. So that's like a short accession year for him. Mm -hmm. And then his first year is going to align with the, the fourth year of Hosea. And it's, it's this year when the, the Passover takes place. And um, the Passover, Passover is going to be in the May time. In the May. So yeah, May. In, in the first year of Hezekiah. So we'll have another diagram. I'll move to the next page. We're going to have to stop share. Oh, I did. So the, this is taking us back to the to this year here. So the fourth year of Hosea and the first year of Ahaz is aligning. So we've aligned them here. This is to get another diagram. This is continuing on. So we have the May marked for the Passover. So the fifth year. Of Hosea is the second year of Hezekiah. I haven't put have to put that in there. Sixth year of Hosea, third year, and then we have the seventh year of Hosea aligning with the fourth year of Hezekiah. So in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hosea, that Shalmaneser came up against Samaria and besieged it. So we have them years aligning, and we have this here in my statement saying. About two years later, from the Passover, we have this here statement here coming into to, to, uh, to play. So if this was in the May time, uh, this could be, be, this is the year, is it 723? So it could be like uh, quite early on. We know that Babylon besieged uh, Jerusalem in January. So even if it was like February, that would make that period there roughly about two years and nine months. So Ellen White's saying here about two years later, I'm saying that uh, that would be roughly two years, nine months. Um, so she's, she's rounded down them years. You know, she's saying about two years. So she's quite being not maybe, a, she's just been a quite loose on it. So would that work? Well, okay. So, um, so we have 723, and we know that this siege is going to happen before the harvest, right? Because that's when you're going to besiege a city. Uh, now, you could besiege it quite a long time before. I mean, you could do it a couple of months. But generally speaking, just from a logistical point of view, 
you're going to do it before the harvest, usually in like the 12th month, uh, because the winter, it's quite rainy. Um, it's kind of a miserable time to have a siege. So you're going to wait till the rains are over, and, and then you're going to besiege the city. So that would have happened um, in the seventh year of, of Hoshea, which is going to go from fall to fall. So, so that's not really a problem. Um, now, so saying it's about two years and nine months, yeah, two years, nine months, two years, 10 months, maybe. Um, so I can kind of accept that because she says about two years. She's not being very specific. And she knows that this is the first year of Hezekiah that this Passover occurs. And she knows that it's in the fourth year that the siege begins and that Hoshea is going to be taken captive. So, so she would know how to do math. So she, but when she says about two years, I think it, she knows it's less than three years. Um, so, so she chooses the language about two years. It's not very specific, but it's, it's close. Um, now, now this is going to be important because we know in 721 BC in the spring that Sargon uh, II is going to finish off the work begun by Shalmaneser V. So it's going to be Shalmaneser who's going to take Hoshea captive. And, and then this siege is going to last a long time. Right. So the Bible says three years, but it says at the end of three years, which means uh, the border of three years, the third year, does it mean the, the last extremity? It can be the beginning of a year. So so that's going to be two years that they have this siege and it's going to end in the spring. So so when Hoshea is when Hoshea is taken captive and we see the same thing with Jehoiachin. He's taken captive because when you have a siege, you're going to send out, I mean, the king is going to go out and try to negotiate. And for whatever reason, the negotiations broke down and Hoshea gets taken captive. And Assyria decides that they're going to go in this for the long haul. It's going to take two years until they finally, uh, you know, Samaria is going to succumb to this siege. And, and these aren't unprecedented. I mean, these are things that happen often. But usually they resolve it within a shorter period of time. So this is a pretty long siege. But Samaria is a very difficult city uh, to have a siege against. Um, now, uh, so so this, this solves the problem with Ellen White's statement, which to me was the main problem. But I still have some problems with your timing here. So uh, can you go back to the other drawing? Uh, where you have 726. So you're saying 726 um, is going to be uh, the fourth year of Hoshea and the first year of Hezekiah. Now, you also have the 15th year in there. Why wouldn't you, uh, another solution would be uh, to say that Hoshea, Hezekiah uh, that his first soul year of reign, that maybe that there's an overlap with him and Ahaz. It's just not recorded. And that's that's the solution some people have. Um, that it's going to actually be a bit later. So some people do suggest a, a co-regency, which we're going to have this 16 years. Um and I have a hard time putting it at 16 years unless – here, can I go back to my drawing here? Just show you what I'm talking about. I hope this was here. Yeah, what's that? This was the one, the one I had sent you previously where I had a Korean. Yeah, I know. I, so and, and I'm not a fan of the Korean either, right? <laughs> so I, that's not my solution. My solution was to have Ahaz, uh, because it has to do with the beginning here of 742. So I'll show you what I mean. Um, 
because one of the things we have is we have this uh, 65 year prophecy in 742 BC. So if we have um, Ahaz, you're going to have him beginning then in the fall of 742 that his first year begins, right? Or you can have it in the spring of 742. Or you can have it in the spring of 741. I think you have it in the spring of 741 if you're doing it that way. Right? So this is the spring to spring ones. And so if I'm going to take here, um, you would actually have to have his first year in the spring of 741. That's how it would line up. C five four. But then it would have another session year. What's that? But then he would have a session year that goes into seven forty two. Right. So you're going to say that that seven forty two is after the spring of seven forty two, later in seven forty two, right? I know I don't have it here. I might have it on my other page. Um, I'm really going to that okay, so I don't know if I even have that option written down here. Yeah, so it would have had to have been here. This would have been his first year of rain in the spring. Uh, so I don't know. I, I still think you have... Jotham's reign kind of wrong. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to look over that in more detail. So it, it seems to me that you must have him start later. Because remember, Jotham is going to reign 16 years. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and his reign is going to be spring to spring. So if you're going to have Ahaz begin a spring to spring rain he's going to have to a uh, jotham's going to have to die before the spring of 742 but i think you have him later so um so we're going to have to work this out we're going to have to communicate we're not going to be able to solve this right now but but you see the problem right hopefully other people can kind of see that you have to go back and everything has to be connected. You can't sort of leave. You can't have this fuzziness about exactly how you're counting this. So to me, there's a consistency um, when you have the change from spring to spring to fall to fall happen with Ahaz. And so what you see here on the bottom, this is Ahaz spring to spring rain. And you see he reigns 16 years in his 16th year. Hezekiah is going to begin to reign. But in a fall to fall count, it would end up being in his 15th year. And so I have the first year here of Hezekiah beginning in the fall of 727, like you do. And which I think is the important part here is that we have this this lines up, but it's just working out the details of how we get there. Oh. Okay, so do you want to share your screen again? It's kind of weird. One of my uh, computers uh, disconnected Zoom, the one I was sharing the screen with, but yet it still shows it there. <laughs> it's kind of weird. Anyway, you can share yours. Okay. I don't know what happened. <clears throat> well, at least the one I'm recording on is still working. Okay, so uh, we've covered this here down to Josiah. Okay. And then I have so 
Daniel's taken captive when he's 15 or 16, Elamite says. Mm -hmm. And uh, fourth year of Zedekiah, Hananiah's fourth false prophecy, 593. See, I'm just trying to see if there's anything here. Well, one of the things is we had um, – because uh, you mentioned it, but then you said that you, you used the wrong name. But Josiah's reign and the beginning of – of because uh, you have Jehoahaz the second, I guess. And, um, and then you have Jehoiakim and then Jehoiachin and then Zedekiah. So we sort of touched on those. But you also have the end of Josiah's reign. We probably should go over that. Have you? Because you had Josiah's reforms, which are connected to these prophecies of Ezekiel. So can you go a bit over Josiah's reign, some of the events there? Again, I know we, we sort of went over it. Because we dealt with Jeremiah, right? We dealt with Jeremiah in the 13th year. Of Josiah, Jeremiah yeah. begins to his prophesying, and he's going to prophesy all the from that time uh, in the years of Josiah, um, Jehoahaz, Jehoiakim, Jehoiachin, and Zedekiah all through that period of time, and until the last year of Zedekiah. So Jeremiah is going to be prophesying from 627 BC until. Uh, 586, right? Yeah, um, yeah, 13th year, yes. Well, yeah. even be, yeah, yeah, he began like, prophesying in the 13th year of Josiah. That's right. Yeah, so so that's oh, gonna yeah. be. 41 years. Yes. About, right? We don't know exactly when in the 13th year of Josiah he began to prophesy. We just know it's in the 13th year of Josiah. And Josiah is going fall to fall. So, I mean, it could be a bit earlier, you know, 626, early in 626. Um, wait, it would have to be, it would have to be late. Uh, it'd have to be 627. It wouldn't be. Yeah, okay. Because Josiah's 13th year goes from the fall of 628 to the fall of 627, right? So, so it has to be in 627, probably. So it ends up being 41 years that Jeremiah prophesies. Okay, so half Josiah begin the reign in 640. Mm -hmm. Years when he begins, uh, is this, sorry, in the eighth year when he's uh, 16 years old. Yeah. He begins to seek after the God of his father David. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, in his 12th year, then he begins these here purges of the idols mm -hmm. in Judea. And Israel. Yeah. And then we, we discuss here the 13th year. Jeremiah begins. The 18th year is when the book of the law is found. Yeah. And so that's going to be the Passover is going to be in 622. Yes. So. Well, it's still the 18th year, even yeah. though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's following, finding the book of the law in the fall. Or, late, or early winter or whatever in 623. Mm -hmm. And then he has the Passover, 622. We'll have Daniel being found, born around that as well. Okay. So, or else he could be born around the time of the Passover. So we're not sure exactly. The other might say it's 15 or 16. So it's either one of them years. Okay. So it could be significant that he's born at that time. And then uh, Josiah dies at 609. And he's uh, 
page 39, Ellen White says. Now he's going to die in, in about May of, um, so what, what do you have, Josiah's age 30. Who dies here? Josiah's age 39. Okay, yeah, there he is. Yeah, so he dies in the battle where he wasn't supposed to go to fight. And and that's going to be in about May of 609. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so Ellen White says, for more than a decade, following the celebration of the Passover, Josiah continued to reign. At the age of 39, he met his death in battle with the forces of Egypt. Yeah, so 609 to 622 is more than a decade. Mm -hmm. So, um, would you have Jehovah has in there? Because Jehovah has is going to reign after yes yeah yeah so it's just he's going to be 22 years old when he begins to reign and he reigns three months and then he's taken to egypt yeah and then, uh, we're not told how long he lived yeah and then uh, jehoiakim Takes over, so I should maybe have Jehoiakim begin the reign then in that same year. Right. Yeah, Jehoiakim should be mentioned there. And he's going to begin his reign prior to the fall. So Jehoiakim is probably going to begin reigning in September um, or late August. And uh, the past, the, the Day of Atonement or the, uh, the beginning of the seventh year is going to happen. Uh, late September, so so he's gonna he's gonna have an, a short accession year, just a month or so. Thank you for that. Yeah. Right. So we have here just correlations with um, when Zedekiah, uh, the period of, of his reign when Ezekiel has his prophecies. And so nothing much more about events. It's just roughly correlated, um, just what focusing on what Ezekiel was prophesying about their time. Okay. Yeah. So we have here when he begins in 592. Yeah. Chapters 1 to 7, and then the following years, chapters 8 to 19, and then the following year, chapters 20 to 23. That's uh, four years before the destruction of the temple. Yeah. Now, also, Zedekiah's reign is going to be spring to spring. Now, and, and just going to that point. So, remember, we were talking about Hezekiah and Hoshea's reign. Um, so if I'm going to go, where is that? Um, that's going to be second things. I think I have it as a footnote. Yeah. And yeah. And it's, uh, where is it here? It's in, Hoshea begins to reign, Ahaz reigns, second Kings. Uh, 18, it came to pass in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel. And it says at the end of three years, they took it even in the sixth year of Hezekiah, that is the ninth year of Hoshea, king of Israel. So this expression here, comparing the years in this way, um, saying that it is, not just that it occurred in a year, but it, that it is a year, shows that they're both going fall to fall. 
And you see the same thing when it came to Nebuchadnezzar's reign, um, that it's it's going to be in, where is this here? Uh, Jeremiah 31, I think. It's in Jeremiah, hey? okay. Yeah, so in Jeremiah. No, I don't think it's Jeremiah 31. See if I can find this. It's the eleventh year of. Um, Zedekiah and the 18th year Hank of Nebuchadnezzar. Is that what it is? Yeah, the 18th. Maybe 19th. 19th yeah. Hank, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Did you find it? You got uh, the Jeremiah, book? Jeremiah 30. Do you have it in this? Actually, I was looking for it. Jeremiah 32, verse 1 says, the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the tenth year of Zedekiah, king of Judah, so the tenth year, which was the eighteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar. So yeah. the which was again implies that the reigns of Zedekiah and Nebuchadnezzar began at the same time of the year, namely the spring. Yeah. So there's the only places where I find that occur. And and so the language in the Hebrew, it's it's quite different. So when it talks about, you know, somebody beginning to reign in the year of someone else, um, that's the normal way in which it happens, showing that they're not uh, they're not counted the same. They're not both spring to spring or both fall to fall, except in these two incidences, incident, in two places, right? Instances. So um, so these become, you know, I know somebody looking on when we, we look at this chronology, um, I think one thing we want people to see is that this has been worked out in great detail. And, and we've weighed all of the different arguments. Um, but when we look at this, you know, 586, if you go to Wikipedia for the destruction of Jerusalem, they're going to have 587. And that's because they're using uh, Edwin Thiel's date. So they're going to say that uh, one is they're going to make the siege um, longer. They're going to make it, I believe, a two and a half year siege if they do it that way. I'm trying to remember how they do that. No, I think they have a year and a half siege. Uh, but some people have 586 and they have a two and a half year siege. So there's all these little differences. And, and I can't expect that every single person who watches these videos is going to become an expert on biblical chronology. But when we look at these things, you can see that we start with the premise that the Bible is true and the spirit of prophecy is correct. And we look at these different puzzles and, and we try to sort them through the best that we can. But when we do that, we can see that we take into account everything. Even if we, we come to a different conclusion, Stephen and I might come to different conclusions on some points, but we're, they're still within the information that's given in the Bible and that it's not going to be far apart. That is, there are some things that we just don't have enough information to nail it down, um, but that the Bible is consistent. And, and the more you study into it, the more you see that the Bible isn't full of a bunch of mistakes that would need to be corrected by man. Uh, which is what uh, a lot of chronologists do. 
is, well, it doesn't fit into my theory, so now I'm going to correct the Bible. I'm going to say that that's a typo. And and I really don't like doing that. I mean, I'm not saying that typos don't exist in the Bible, because it is possible they do. But I can't start with the assumption, just because I have a theory, and it doesn't fit the Bible, that that means it's a typo. That becomes a bit of a slippery slope um, to go down. Okay, so Stephen, you got uh, more that you want to look at here, dealing with the destruction of the temple, or um, I have just in this year paper. I go, I go into more an examination of the prophecy of Ezekiel four verses four to six. Okay. So we maybe make a start of it. We well, I don't know. I, I think we should probably just leave that for next time. Okay. Um, but but we can finish up a little bit here with the destruction of Jerusalem. So um, when we look at the siege, when does the siege occur? Because there's a puzzle here, which it, we're going to address when we get into the prophecy of Ezekiel. And, and so we need to look at this a bit more detail, I think. So this will sort of be... Uh, leading into what we'll study in two weeks' time. So what is, the, what is the particular problem that I solved in 2016 regarding the chronology of Ezekiel in relationship to Zedekiah's reign and Jehoiachin's reign? Well, you said that the Ezekiel's uh, his chronology was... Um, going from the captivity of Jehoiachin, which was a uh, fall of the fall. Yeah. And then Zedekiah, his uh, chronology was spring to spring. Yeah. Uh, and the book of Ezekiel has occasions where it begins the chronology in the, in the spring, the first spring of Zedekiah. And sometimes yeah. it uh, references the fall of the fall. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so so I, I'm going to bring up the Bible here, and uh, going to just show you what what Stephen is explaining there. So we have the big puzzle, the big problem that everyone has had who has tried to deal with the captivity. Um, and the destruction of Jerusalem and so forth, is how we count uh, the reign of Zedekiah. And that is, in my screen sharing, I'm looking at it here. It doesn't, uh, there, finally it shows up. Okay, so in Ezekiel chapter 40, it's going to give us some information here. It's going to say, in the 5 and 20th year of our captivity. So Ezekiel chapter 1, verse 1 starts with, it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Kibar, that the heavens were open and I saw visions of God. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiachin's captivity. So if this is the fifth year of Jehoiachin's captivity, and I go to chapter 40 and it says it's in the 20th, 25th year, the 5 and 20th year of our captivity, how many years have passed? If I go from the 5th year of our captivity to the 20 and 5th year. Well, it looks like 20. So it looks like 20. Now, one of the things that it said there in Ezekiel 1.1 1, 1 is it was the 30th year of something. But it didn't say what it was the 30th year of. It just says in the 30th year. Now, when you, when you read here in Ezekiel uh, 40, verse 1, it says, in the 5 and 20th year of our captivity, in Rosh Hashanah, so the King James says the beginning of the year, um, but the Hebrew says Rosh Hashanah, on the 10th day of the month. Now, when is Rosh Hashanah? The fall. The new year. Okay, but what date? What, what month and what day? First day of the seventh month. 
So it's the first day of the seventh month. So if it's the 10th day of the seventh month and it's Rosh Hashanah, what does that mean? A jubilee? It's a jubilee year. So in a jubilee year, they don't start the year on the first day of the seventh month. They begin it on the 10th day of the seventh month. Now, so this means that it's actually 19 and a half years later. Well, not even a half. It's 19 years and two months later. Right, because if it's in the 30th year in the fifth day of the fourth month, so I guess that would be three months. So 19 years and uh, 19 years and nine months later. Does that make sense? Did I get that right, Stephen? Am I doing that right? No, 19 years and three months later. I'm doing it backwards that time. Right. So it's going to be 19 years. If it was in the fifth month, he would have said in the 24th year of our captivity. But once he gets to the 10th day of the seventh month, he's now starting a new year and he's going to say in the 25th year of our captivity. Now, also, he says it's in the 14th year after the city was smitten. So. Some people read this and they say, well, this is if you're going to go to the 25th year and you're going to just subtract 14 years, how many years? after or how many what year of the captivity was the city destroyed if this is the 14th year after the city was smitten and the 25th year of our captivity you just subtract 14 from 25 and you get 11 right so so if you're going to take it that way which is correct. You're going to say this is this is that means in the 11th year of the captivity that the city was destroyed. Right? 25 minus 14 and they're both ordinal counts, so you would go to the 11th year. And and that's the case, right? Right, 11 years from when the captivity until the city is smitten? Yeah, the, the 11th year of the captivity. That Because it's the 25th year of the captivity that he's he's talking about here, and the 14th year after the city was smitten. So if you're going to count, though, the 25th year as... So, so remember, it says in the fifth year, so the captivity happened in which year? captivity of Jehoiachin. 597. Okay. So then you would say, well, if the fifth year is 597, then or, or the first year, then the fifth year is what? If the first year of the captivity is 597, the fifth year of the captivity is what or the 25th year because the question is what year of the captivity is is going to be 14 years from when the city was smitten so we're trying to figure out what year the city was smitten well the fifth year we put down is 592 okay we do okay but most people are going to count so even if we count the fifth year as 592 if they're going to count the 20th year or the 25th year, they're going to count 20 years later, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're going to count 20 years later from 592, that would bring you to where? 572. Okay, so, so 572. And then if you're going to say that you're in the, uh, the 14th year since the city was smitten, what date would you give for the smiting of the city the difference is 572 plus 14 right 586 and you get 586 okay so so when they do that count they're going to be counting this in a spring to spring calendar so that's so the people who take this this way they count a spring to spring calendar 
But if you count to fall to fall calendar, um, and I don't know how to explain this, maybe I, I, I'm going to need a diagram. But let's see here if I can find this quickly. Um, um, I think I got that going the wrong way. Oh, here it is. Okay. Um, I don't know if this is the best diagram that I have. It's probably not. Um, I know I have a better one somewhere, but I don't know where. Mm, just hang on. I'm going to quickly look ahead here. Uh, i got way too many diagrams here. Oh, here it is. Okay. So I have, this is the best one. So I got spring to spring. I got fall to fall. Here's the correct one. So what you see here is the chronology of Ezekiel's visions. Fall to fall captivity and spring to spring Zedekiah. Um, if we're going to look at this history and this is supposed to be over here. I recently changed this to widescreen, which means all this stuff gets pushed over. I have to go through and edit all these. Okay. So um, the top one is not the correct one. It's this bottom one. And I guess I could zoom in a little bit more. When we're going to be counting here, this is the 25th year and the, uh, the 14th year. So when we're talking about the 25th year and the 14th year, it's the 14th year since the city was smitten. How would you count uh, an event if you're counting ordinally? So if you say this is the, the fifth year that I've been in the movement, generally speaking, you would mean that you've been in the movement for four years, correct? Yes. Okay. Now, we're making the argument here that there isn't 20 years between uh, Ezekiel chapter 1 and Ezekiel 40. There's only 19 years because we're saying that since he talks about it being in the 30th year, that when he talks about it being in the in the 25th year of the captivity, that's counting fall to fall. And that means it's going to be the 49th year since his first vision, because the 30th year is the year of the Jubilee cycle. And the 49th year is going to be the year in which, well, technically it's the 50th year. So it would have been the 49th year up until the 10th day of the seventh month, and it's now going to be the 50th year. So if he had said, this is in the 25th year of the captivity and in the 50th year of the Jubilee cycle, he would have been correct. I don't know if people can follow my bad explanation. But one of the keys that came about, so maybe I'm, I'm going to have to go over this again next time, but one of the keys was recognizing that when he talks about in the year of the captivity, he's talking about fall to fall. And when he talks about just generally um, something happens in a certain year, he's he's means spring to spring. So Zedekiah's reign, he counts spring to spring, but he counts uh, 
Jehoiachin's captivity fall to fall. And I know we've gone through this before, but not everybody watching these videos are going to be familiar with that. So I'll maybe try to think of a, a very simple presentation I can do next time before we get into the prophecy of Ezekiel chapter 4. Does that sound okay, Stephen? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So, um, so I appreciate all your work on this. It's very, very helpful. But it's going to take time for people to study through these things because it's taken Stephen and I time in, in order to understand them correctly. And, and there's probably still some things we don't understand correctly. So any, any final thoughts, Stephen, before you close with prayer? Can you close with prayer? <laughs> <laughs> okay, any final thoughts then? Um, no. No, okay. You didn't mind me interrupting you so much, eh? No, no, that's fine. <laughs> Unless that's someone else has any thoughts, any ideas. Yeah, or... yeah. Are, are people able to follow what Stephen and I are doing here? That's the, the question I have. There's lots of points <clears throat> that you're bringing up that need some further explanation, but everything is fairly clear. Okay. Yeah, I do know that, you know, because Iran's talked about this and I've talked about it with him is, um, you know, we need to get this stuff on a website that has some kind of, uh, you know, interactive aspect to it, like where you can search up a king and it'll give you the years that he reigns and and you can search up an event in the Bible and and it will tell you when that occurred and place it somehow in a, uh, you have a line that shows those events. So that people who are looking into chronology have some tools that are interactive for them to deal with. But this paper of Stevens is very good um, in that it gives some really visual ways of looking at chronology because uh, most people can't just hold all these numbers and dates in their heads and kind of uh, sort through them. So, so it's very, very helpful. So I really appreciate the work that Stephen did on this. And, but we still have a lot more work to do. So this is just one step in getting uh, this information together. And and the other thing about it is we, we do believe that at some point um, this information is going to be useful in reaching the Levites. You know, I can't imagine that that many people would be interested in chronology. But if something becomes an issue, um, then – um, some people will definitely become interested in trying to sort through uh, all this information. So, okay. yeah, okay, well, thanks. Uh, and, and thanks, Stephen, again for all that. Let's close with prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we are so very grateful for uh, the time that we have had on this Sabbath and um, for the way that your Holy Spirit has given this movement an understanding of chronology. And we know, Lord, that there's much that we don't understand, but we know that your word is true and that chronology is the backbone and the skeleton of prophecy so that we need to understand chronology, to understand the prophecies of Scripture. And we're thankful for... Uh, uh, the way that we you've been able to help us line on line um, to lay out these events and to see their connections. We ask, Lord, that you can bless each person as they study your word, as they seek for light and truth, and that you can bring us close to you. Uh, thank you for hearing our prayer and be with us um, in this week to come, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.